G'day golfers. This is Total Driving Part 1, increasing your driving distance. Today we're going to plug some common power leaks and show you some techniques that are really going to help you to increase your clubhead speed. And these are consistent for every golfer, from beginners right through to a professional, for junior, senior and women golfers. And stick around to the end, we've got a bonus drill that's really going to help your power output and we're pretty sure you've never seen it before. I'm Glenn Haynes. Welcome to Aussie Golf Pros. Let's begin with some obvious and not so obvious setup fundamentals. Firstly, tee height. We want half the ball showing above the driver there. That's going to give you your best chance of finding the sweet spot, which is just above the center. It's not exactly in the center, just above the center. And that's going to give you your optimal trajectory as well as keeping the spin rate down. Ball position is really key for maximizing your distance. We want mid to high launch with low spin. So we want an angle of approach of the driver head on the up as we hit the golf ball on the up one, two, maybe three degrees. So we need that ball forward in our stance, just inside your lead heel there. That's gonna help you to hit the ball on the up and get that trajectory that we're after. We're looking for around 10 or 11 degrees. I know some players out there are looking for around 15 degrees. I think that's too high for a lot of golfers. Depends on the spin rate, obviously, but I think most players are better off with 10 or 11 degrees. That's what Bryson DeChambeau is hitting it at and it's working for him. However, as you move the ball forward in your stance, you have to make sure that you're not compromising your shoulder alignment. I see a lot of club golfers, as they move the ball forward, they get very open with their shoulders. Now that can change your swing path. Your swing path is likely to follow their shoulders. So if your shoulders are open, your swing path can come out to in across the ball, and that leads to those fades and slices, which reduce your distance. Now, if we want to generate maximum club head speed, then we need a nice, powerful turn. We want a complete backswing turn and rotating. A big power loss is if we're swaying into the backswing and the hips are going out to the side and we're getting forward. The spine angle is leaning forward towards the target. That's not a very powerful position. What we want is to get the spine behind and leaning back away from the target. That really helps us to generate more club head speed, more power into the downswing, and it's safer for your back as well. Now we do want a nice complete rotation into the backswing. Ideally getting around 90 to 100 degrees in the shoulder turn. We want our back pointing towards the target. Now if you're not making it that far, then you can turn your hips a little bit more. A lot of golfers try to restrict their hip turn, but allow the hips to turn. Tour average is a 50 degree backswing turn with the hips. Now if you're not making it that far, then allow that lead heel to come up off the ground and you'll find it easier to turn your hips and your shoulders and you can wind up behind the golf ball better for a good transition into the downswing and getting plenty of club head speed. Another common power loss is a steep swing plane. That means that if you're getting the shaft very vertical into the downswing, then you're going to lose a lot of power. What happens then is the hands and arms are working to generate all that force and you're not being able to use the body. If we can get the shaft laid off more so it's pointing at the golf ball in the downswing or even just outside of the golf ball, then we start to get this slingshot effect. The shaft is in plane and in sync with the body and it can follow that downswing rather than trying to force it this way and get vertical. So it really doesn't matter what the backswing looks like as long as you're getting nice and shallow with the downswing and you can't go too shallow really. I mean, we see Sergio Garcia get right down here. That's a very powerful position to get into the downswing. Another big power loss is casting or early release. That's when we get to good top of the backswing position, but then we start the downswing with the club or with the arms. That means we're putting a lot of effort in too early. The arms, the shoulders and the hands are working here and expending all of that energy way too early. We want to have lag into the downswing. That means the club is lagging behind the rest of the body. Now you can't force this with your wrists. A lot of golfers try to force lag here and keep, try to keep that angle. All you're going to do is leave the club face open and hit those big slices and blocks out to the right-hand side for a right-hander. True lag comes from energizing your lower half more. So getting some downforce energy, pushing into the ground, squatting into it, and then turning. We want to turn into the backswing, but we also need to turn into the downswing and follow through. So if you start that downswing with your hands and arms and the club, you've expended all that energy, you're trying really hard, there's all this effort, extra effort, and you're not going to generate much club head speed. True lag comes from lower half generated power. Not so much effort with the hands and arms, softer hands and allowing the club to follow and race through that way. 
Of course, all of that great rotation isn't much good unless you're doing it fast. You see, learning how to hit the ball further is as much a mental thing as it is a physical thing. And generating speed, learning how to swing fast, comes through habit, through repetition, through pushing yourself to swing faster. So what we're going to do next is we're going to do some overspeed training. So we're going to lighten my driver. Most modern drivers these days have a weight, a removable weight in the back. So I'm going to ask you to remove that weight and we're going to do some swings. Now we're not going to hit the ball without the weight in it. That's not good for the driver. Put that into my pocket. Don't want to lose that. And we're going to swing really, really fast. Nice slow back swing and then fast through. We're going to see if we can overtrain your speed so that we can get into the habit of swinging faster. And I want you to do about 10 of them. And then I want you to reverse it and do it left-handed if you're right-hander. So switch it around. So turn the club upside down, switch your hands around as well. Now this is gonna be a bit challenging for many of you, but it's really good for dexterity, for muscle symmetry as well. And it's good for your back and it's gonna help that speed training. All right, let's put the weight back in. It's a bit of a workout, so really take your time. Don't want you just swinging backwards and forwards. Stop, have a little rest if you want to. I'm a little bit out of breath there. So get your breath back. We're gonna put our weight back in. And of course, as a workout, check with your healthcare professional first before undergoing this. But as I said, take your time with it. And this is gonna feel a little heavy. A couple of clicks there, cause that's a torque wrench. A couple of swings just to get used to the weight of again, fast. Let's see if we can get that clubbed speed up over 110. Now regardless of what your current swing speed is at, you can improve it with some overspeed training. I promised you a drill to help you with your ground force energy, something that you've never seen before. I call this the rock drill. I want you to grab a medium sized rock, fairly flat, something that we can get half of our lead foot on. Now, to get ground force energy and to rotate and get those hips turning through the shot, we want to push against the ground. We're pushing in that direction. So the rock there is to help us, to give us something to push against. Generally, it's just the ground. But to get used to that, we use a rock to encourage that down force and that push against the ground in that direction so that we can then spin the hips away from the ball and get some ground force energy to get some more speed. So have a go without the ball first. So we get to the top of the backswing and then push. We're pushing against the rock, pushing those hips out of the way and around. You might lose your balance a little bit, but then have a go with the ball. As you can see, I've got half of my lead foot on the rock and let's push against it. We've talked a lot about speed today, but to try to hit the ball further, you actually need to find that sweet spot as well. So pop up in the corner here, there's a video to help you to improve your ball striking with your driver. Thanks so much for watching. We'll be back next week with part two, learning how to hit your driver straighter. Are you the best golfer you can be?